Hello, yeah, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Ashna Nagji. Really uh, happy to be with you here virtually today uh, to talk about a really important uh, topic, one that uh, perhaps is a bit taboo, that we don't really openly share um, with our loved ones or even just in society in general, but one that is quite common, and that's the topic of miscarriage. And I hope that this brief introduction will allow you to um, not only increase your awareness, maybe answer some questions, but maybe make it um, make it a safer space for you to be able to bring this up to talk about. And so the objectives of this uh, particular section of the talk is about uh, you know what is a miscarriage and what are the risk factors and causes of miscarriages. And so I just wanted to first start off with uh, terminology. Uh, interestingly, uh, there's a lot of variance globally with this uh, terminology. So um, you, you might have heard the words miscarriage or abortion, early pregnancy loss. There's lots of different uh, names for this. And interestingly, there was a study done of 145 American English speaking women. And in that study, it showed that the term miscarriage and early pregnancy loss was the preferred terminology. When we say early uh, loss, we usually mean less than 13 weeks. A, a second trimester loss is one that's uh, between 13 to 20 weeks. That's approximately 1% of the population. And then, uh, you know, when it's after 20 weeks, uh, this is usually referred to as a stillbirth or a fetal death. Uh, and it's after 20 weeks or a weight of 350 grams. Sometimes, you know, that dating uh, and where the gestational age is of the pregnancy is, uh, you know, sometimes unknown. And so we have both uh, the 20 weeks or the 350 grams. Uh, you know, this I mentioned at the beginning um, is a very common topic. I, I'm a family doctor. I, I do deliveries. And, you know, I see this a lot in my practice, but, you know, others uh, in different fields and different walks of life may not know that, you know, um, when we're looking at pregnancy losses, it's almost one out of three uh, women can experience this in their lifetime. And, and so that's pretty high. And this is, you know, we're, we're looking at this data with those that we have identified, that we've named, that we've declared. Um, those that happen prior to clinical recognition, this number could actually be quite, quite even uh, a bit more. And so this is actually a really common phenomenon, even though you might not have heard of it uh, as much amongst your friends or family. So the classification is uh, spontaneous or induced and spontaneous can include medical or mechanical means as well. And so, you know, we talked about risk factors, what, what increases your risk of having a, um, a miscarriage and there's lots. Um, and sometimes we have uh, etiologies or reasons like this is the reason why there was a loss. And sometimes uh, it's, it's a, a bunch of different things. And sometimes, you know, we're not able to really pinpoint what that can be. One thing that we do know for sure is maternal age. And this was a study done, a large study done of 421,000 pregnancies. And when we looked at uh, maternal age, we saw that if you were having a baby between 25 to 29, your risk was 10%. You can see that as you increase every half a decade, this number increases considerably to over 45 years or older, it's over half, like 57%. And so, uh, you know, sometimes we wish we had known these things earlier to help us plan our pregnancies as, as people are sort of entering into their careers and, and focused on their careers, you know, time can kind of pass on by. And so these are these are important things to be aware of. Uh, you know, they often ask, well, what about the father? What about the male side of the house? What's happening there? And actually, interestingly, uh, advanced paternal age interestingly enough, is also associated with a modest increase in risk of miscarriage, but it's not to the same extent as with women. So when we're, when we're talking about women, we're saying that over the age of 30, things are starting to increase in terms of risk, uh, but for men that uh, they get a little bit more bonus uh, and it starts over the age of 40. 
Other risk factors are prior history of miscarriages, you've had multiple pregnancies, or the increase in the number of times you've been pregnant. Uh, if you have an IUD in place, or uh, if obesity is an, a challenge that you're dealing with, and we know that the increase of the body mass index over 25 is increased, uh, increases your risk uh, by about 70% diabetes, thyroid disease, and interestingly enough, stress. And we talk about this a lot in life that, uh, you know, life is crazy, everything's stressful. And it's not those short periods of stress, you know, life is tough, you've got some deadlines at work, um, you know, somebody got COVID, uh, you know, or an illness. Um, but these are sort of longer disparities we're talking about, some of the social determinants of health. So if we're talking about uh, racial, ethnic uh, inequities, financial, food insecurities, those kind of sort of longer term stressors are going to be increasing uh, your risk factors for early pregnancy loss. And, you know, just something to call out and name out here. Um, when we're talking about sort of perhaps uh, the reasons why, when we're talking about the abnormal conceptus, uh, this could be a chromosomal issue, it could be a structural or genetic issue. Uh, when we're looking at perhaps maternal causes, these can be immunologic based, uh, some issues with the uterus, the home in which the fetus sits, uh, endocrine issues, thyroid, lupus, diabetes, things like that. Infection uh, could be the, what's called the torch infection or, you know, some of the STIs, the sexually transmitted infections, and then things that are exposed in our environment. So smoking, alcohol, um, stress that we just talked about. Uh, and then sometimes you can have uh, bleeding uh, being a uh, you know, an influencer as well, because this causes changes that are necrotic and then kind of cause for the detachment of the fetus implantation into the wall of the uterus. And that can obviously cause problems. So what are the different types of uh, losses? You can see all the different categories here and I'll walk through them um, just so we have a quick set. So there's threatened, inevitable, incomplete, complete, missed and reoccurrent. So threatened uh, usually happens before 20 weeks of uh, gestational age of pregnancy, um, often seen with vaginal bleeding. You may or may not notice some pain or aches, crampy kind of like feelings. Uh, and, you know, when it's saying threatened, it's about 25 to 50% chance of loss um, in the pregnancy. So, you know, sometimes these are the ones where you have to watch and wait and sit on it and kind of see... Um, you know, the path forward. And, and that can be a, a challenging um, situation to be in. And, you know, part of exploring the topic of miscarriages is also exploring um, sort of the holistic impact emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And, you know, making sure that you're also thinking about these pieces and allowing yourself the space to be able to journey through those emotions um, as they align and fit with you and, and your particular story. Uh, inevitable is when uh, oftentimes we'll see uh, bleeding and cramping and pain, but we'll often also see the cervix dilating, which obviously you don't want to be seeing at this early stage in pregnancy. And sometimes you, you can see some passage of uh, products of conception. When we're seeing the passage of the products of conception, we know that it'll be in inevitable that, you know, uh, this is not going to be a viable situation any longer. And then you have the two arms of incomplete or complete. So incomplete, meaning that you've got some of the products that have come through, uh, but not all of them. And, you know, that that would need to then be followed up. And then you've got the complete that everything's kind of come out. The cervix is now closed. The door is closed. Sort of all the products of conception are now out and that the uh, uterus has gone back to that smaller size and you're not sort of feeling uh, pregnant per se. So that nausea, that vomiting, breast tenderness, mood changes, all of that is, is gone um, because the products of conception have also been released. So continuing on with the types, you can have the mist, unfortunately. And so, um, you know, this might be early on in your pregnancy where you go for a dating scan. And at that dating ultrasound, you might say uh, that, oh, gosh, this is where we're at. And it was missed, whether that was a couple of days ago or weeks ago. That's often the story that I hear. And that the products of conception are retained in the, in the uterus and then you know, that leads to then a uh, conversation about how that's then uh, removed. 
And then the recurrent uh, losses is when we have three uh, or more uh, spontaneous losses. And this can often signal that, you know, something else is probably going on, uh, whether it's genetically or anatomically, hormonally, some type of infection or systemic uh, diseases, uh, something to sort of further um, uh, consider and explore and perhaps even work up. So in terms of uh, symptoms and steps, we talked a little bit about the spotting and bleeding and clots. Oftentimes, um, you know, you're notified of this because you've got some like vague cramping or pain, things that just don't really feel right in that uh, in that phase of your pregnancy. And so this is a time where you, you need to get um, clinical evaluation and advice. So calling the on-call uh, physician or midwife, whoever you're seeing for your care, and having an examination. And sometimes this could be just, you know, a visual examination or through a speculum to see what the cervix is looking like. Sometimes we need some imaging, uh, so some ultrasound, for example, and then, you know, plus minus some intervention, whether that's um, medically, so, uh, you know, taking some medicine or surgically. Uh, and, and, Part of this is, you know, um, like I mentioned before, some of the stuff that needs to get done, but the other piece of it um, that I, I really emphasize also is that there's a whole lot of work to be done for the mental, emotional, um, the psychological, the spiritual journey that needs to, to happen, um, particularly if this was a planned pregnancy, if this was something that, uh, you know, was unexpected, all of these other factors kind of layer on um, pieces of work that would uh, need to go in tandem and lockstep with this journey. So, you know, uh, the the key piece I think uh, to remember is that early pregnancy loss is really common. It's the most common complication in the first trimester. And oftentimes, you know, this is the body's way of saying this is genetic mismatch. It's, it's not going to make sense. I don't want to invest so much time and resource into this. And it's a very natural selection kind of way of our body um, preserving how much energy it's giving. Having said that, that doesn't uh, make it any less painful or any less uh, difficult, but just something to think about that, um, you know, you, you're not alone in this and that lots of other uh, pregnant people and women have walked this path, uh, unfortunately. Um, but that there's also hope that uh, many women who experience pregnancy loss are also really likely to have subsequent normal pregnancies. And I think that hope is, is really important to also keep center of mind. So I hope that this uh, offered a brief overview of the types of uh, miscarriages that um, can occur and uh, sort of some of the steps that uh, ought to be considered both from a medical clinical side, but also from the mental uh, and spiritual side for that holistic um, um, care and attention along this journey. Thank you so much for having me and for enabling me to share this journey with you. Uh, I hope that um, this finds you in good health and peace and prosperity and wishing you lots of love and light uh, moving forward. I want to thank uh, those who have organized this behind the scenes and for the health board and supporting. Thanks very much. Thank you.